In this slide cast, we're going to look at the project players. These are the organizations that are involved in an engineering project. So there's, these are the main parties that are normally occurring. This is for a design bid build project. So um, for other projects, it's a little bit different, but we're just looking at a design bid build. So we've got the client as the person or the organization who uh, wants the the project works, who wants the building or wants the road or whatever is being produced by the building, by the project. And they are the ones who pay for it. The next party is the consultant. They're the ones that have the skills to develop the design, to do the investigations, uh, to figure out what's required, to document it as uh, drawings and specifications, and then when it's being built to make sure it's being built properly. And the last party is the contractor. Um, they are the ones who have the plant and skills to actually construct the project works. So they have the plant, they have the people that can operate the plant, they have the guys that know how to manage them. So let's look at how each one of these interacts with the engineering project process that we looked at previously. So it all starts with the client who identifies a need or an opportunity. So it might be a council identifying a need for a new road or it could be a developer identifying an opportunity to make money out of building an office building and letting it out to people. So there's the inception. So the client needs to do some investigation. So he talks to the engineer, you know, what can I build? Um, how much is it going to cost, sort of? You know, is it going to cost millions? Is it going to cost hundreds of millions? Um, and also he talks to his legal advisor. So he talks to his lawyer, he talks to his accountant. You know, what's my legal status? Can I, um, how am I going to finance this? If he's a developer, um, interested in how much he's going to get out of uh, rent or something like that, he talks to valuers and real estate agents. You know, how much am I going to be able to sell this for? How much, if I'm keeping it, how much am I going to be able to let it out for? And the last one is the bank. He will go to the bank and say, um, how much money can I borrow to do this project? If he decides that it's feasible, he can do it, he wants to do it, then he goes on to the next stage, which is the um, feasibility study and that's usually done by the engineer and there's usually a consultancy contract established. A contract means that there is a binding relationship. Um, they both have responsibilities to each other. If one of them reneges on those responsibilities then the other one can sue them. So the engineer to do the feasibility study, it might be that he doesn't have in-house expertise in geotech. So he might go to another consultancy and ask them to do the geotech for example. So that's what a subconsultant is. It might be the same with surveying, so they might get surveyors to do the survey work for them. If they decide that the project is feasible, if the client decides that, then we go on to the design, uh, and that's usually done by the engineer. Remember engineer, same thing as consultant. Um, and from that, we've got a design, we've got an engineer's estimate for how much it's going to cost, and then the client makes a decision, do I want to build it? Do I want to carry on with the project? If he doesn't, then the project's over, or we might repeat the design. If he does, then the next step is to find someone to do the work. And that is what the tendering process is all about. Finding a contractor that can do the job, have the skills and expertise to do it, and they're going to do it for the right price. How much are they going to charge? That's what the tendering process is all about. At the end of the tendering process, there should be a construction contract between the client and the contractor. So the contractor is now legally bound to build what's in the contract. The client is legally bound to pay him for it. During that construction phase, um, the engineer is involved in monitoring it, making sure the contractor is doing it properly. Uh, the contractor is busy building it, building the, the project works. Um, and he'll have suppliers supplying the materials, he'll have subcontractors, so it might be that he doesn't have roading expertise and he has to hire another contractor to do that, for example. Um, they're usually in debt until they get the final payment, so they need to have loans from the bank and they need to ensure the works. And there's the community, the people in the area, and the local authorities, the consenting authorities, and all three of them are involved in communicating with them. So that when the construction is complete, the, the works are commissioned, and it is handed over to the client. The involvement, the client is involved right from the start. At commissioning, he takes over control of it, of the project works, and he is involved further on. The engineer, his responsibilities start at, usually at inception, um, and when it, the project works is commissioned, his work is over. Same with the contractor. End of the project commissioning, the contractor is all finished. So the next few slides look at each one of these parties in turn in a little bit more detail about what they do.